Many have joked about the possibility of Chelsea being relegated. Our relatively poor form this past year has certainly beckoned questions regarding the safety of the London club. On the 17th of November 2023, it was announced Everton Football Club would face a 10-point deduction following an alleged breach of the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. Later that same day, reports began to emerge that both Manchester City and Chelsea faced the grim reality of automatic relegation. Just how serious are these claims? Let's find out. Before I continue, I would like to quickly remind you I am running a giveaway with ownasaber.com where at 15,000 subscribers, you could be in with a chance at winning the King of London lightsaber, the perfect saber for every Chelsea fan. Three participants will be chosen and all you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and check the pinned comment down below for more information. And with that, on with the video. Quick disclaimer, I am not an expert in FFP. I'm not claiming to know exactly how football finances work. I have done my own research, which I believe to be accurate. First things first, I think it's wise to begin by understanding the reason as to why Everton have been punished with a 10 point deduction. And to get to that point, we must first go over the rules placed upon European football clubs regarding their financial undertakings. FFP or the UEFA Financial Fair Play Regulations was first introduced during the dawn of the 2011 20 2012 season. However, it was first conceptualized in 2009 when a review conducted by UEFA found that over half of the clubs in Europe ended the year with losses. Some clubs can sustain heavy losses year in, year out thanks to wealthy owners, whereas other clubs who take out loans in an attempt to keep up with the very wealthy owners fell short and into financial ruin. Regarding the Premier League, it was found that at the end of the 08-09 season, taking into account all 20 clubs, there was a combined three 3.3 billion pounds in losses. Now, the actual rules have changed over the years, abiding to the evolving nature of football and seem to have settled on these regulations. Clubs must not incur over 105 million pounds in losses over a period of three years, but this does not take into account youth signings, infrastructure investments such as stadium building and the development of new training facilities and community programs. Along with this loss limit, clubs can spend no more than 70% of their revenue on player fees, agent fees and wages. There is, of course, a lot more technical jargon involved, but those two regulations are the main focus for the majority of FFP investigations. So what did Everton do? In short, it was discovered the Toffees had sustained losses somewhere in the region of £124.5 million following the end of the 21-22 campaign, 19.5 million over the threshold dictated by FFP. This came as a result of the club's heavy spending on players. Between the 1920 and 22 season, £203.5 million have been spent on transfers alone, with the club only making back £113.5 million back in sales. This does not take into account salaries and other such expenses which fall under the watchful eyes of FFP, but it does show how the club operated over the years. It also doesn't help that the poor form of the Evertonians over the years has led to a lack of projected income and therefore shortcomings in the club's profits. Everton's failure to generate enough income through their performances on the field and in the transfer market led to the 10-point deduction. Many, including Everton, believe the ruling to be highly unfair, especially when you compare their conduct to Manchester City and Chelsea. 10 points for 19.5 million does sound a bit harsh. However, if recent reports are to be believed, they will not be alone in facing sanctions. This is where we move on to the Chelsea situation and the leaked financial movements taken by Chelsea's previous ownership. Now, there's no denying the fact that Roman Abramovich will go down as one of the most memorable owners of all time. When he purchased Chelsea Football Club in June of 2003, the Premier League changed forever. His deep, deep pockets allowed for a great number of acquisitions to help reach the levels of glory the oligarch envisioned when he bought the club and after 19 years of ownership, Chelsea had won 18 major trophies whilst at the same time employing 13 different managers, including Jose Mourinho, twice. During the same period, Chelsea and Abramovich faced a great deal of scrutiny from the rest of the Premier League. Our spend, spend, spend nature was seen as unfair to many, and this wasn't left unchecked. Chelsea were found guilty regarding restrictions surrounding the acquisition and implementation of youth players, along with a number of somewhat secret payments to players' agents and families who the club were in negotiations with. Following this filing, Chelsea were banned from acting within the 2019 summer window and the 2020 January window. Window. Trouble began to emerge following the Todd Bowley led consortium acquisition of Chelsea Football Club in 2022, when Abramovich was forced to sell the club due to the ongoing sanctions against Russian oligarchs 
following the invasion of Ukraine. The new owners studied the previous financial records and discovered a number of inconsistencies. £100 million was set aside in preparation for future financial investigations. Wanting to be open and show good faith, the new owners reported their findings to the Premier League in the hopes this may lessen the potential ramifications. However, new information has come to light which may cost Chelsea dearly. The Guardian conducted an investigation along with the Cyprus Confidential into Chelsea's finances and found a number of payments in the tens of millions of pounds ballpark that have been made to players' agents, associates of Premier League winning managers and club officials. According to the article, agents of Eden Hazard, Willian and Samuel Eto'o were recipients of payments from Abramovich along with people known to Antonio Conte. The Conte connection was a man called Federico Pastorello, an Italian football agent who allegedly received a lump sum of £10 million from the Russian billionaire through one of his many businesses situated in the British Virgin Islands. This money was funneled through a private fund and later that same day, the Italian coach signed a new deal with the London club worth nearly £10 million a year. Eden Hazard was signed in 2012 following the London club's Champions League triumph for a fee in the region of €35 million Euros, with his agent John Biko Panak demanding £6 million for his services. In 2013, another one of Roman Abramovich's British Virgin Island businesses named Leaston Holdings made a €7 million Euro payment, this time to Dubai-based Golf Value FC. E under the premise of advisory research related to sport research and consultancy. Hazard's agent signed off on this payment on behalf of the company. Between 2005 and 2017, 7 million euros was paid between a number of companies linked to two people, Zoran and Vladica Lemic. Vladica was heavily involved in the process of signing Matic, Ivanovic, Ian Robben and manager Carlo Ancelotti. Fellow Russian billionaire Suleiman Kerimov bought a club by the name of Angie and then a word I cannot pronounce in 2011 and injected a lot of funds into the club to acquire players. Players such as Willian, Roberto Carlos, Samuel Eto'o and even Yuri Zhirkov from Chelsea for £13.2 million. Two years later, funding was held back significantly and the club was forced to sell players, including Willian and Eto'o, both to Chelsea. Kerimov, like Abramovich, owned a number of companies and two months before the deals for the players were completed, two of his companies received €12 million Euros each, totaling €24 million Euros from Abramovich's companies to Kerimov's. This transaction was completed under the guise of services relating to football, including scouting and other football-related device, according to the article. Now, you may be wondering why Roman would do this. Well, agent fees come under the scrutiny of FFP. Through using offshore investment companies, Roman was able to work around the perimeters set by UEFA in order to make direct payments to agents and other such individuals within the club or who are in dealings with the club, with the transactions not officially coming under the books of Chelsea Football Club and therefore reducing the amount of money involved in player deals in the eyes of FFP. This is potentially a reason as to why Chelsea were able to operate the way they did, sign the number of players they signed whilst avoiding any major issues with FFP. Now, Todd Bowley has already brought to light some of the goings on that happened during the previous ownership to UEFA and has since paid a fine of £8.6 million. However, UEFA can only look back three years due to limitations. The Premier League aren't quelled by these limitations and they do have the power to investigate much further back into the club's financial records. This is where things may start to turn sour for Chelsea Football Club. Unfortunately, we have effectively hidden tens of millions of pounds in secret payments, therefore lying to UEFA and the Premier League as to just how much we were actually spending. Everton were deducted 10 points for being around £20 million over FFP limitations. However, they didn't try to hide it. It just happened. Picture it like this. One man was speeding, going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. He was pulled over, fined, given points on his license, and he went on his merry way. That is Everton. Chelsea are driving a Lamborghini and overtake Everton, going 50 miles an hour over the speed limit. However, we can outrun the police and we're also using fake license plates, meaning the police can't find us because they can't find us. Except now they found the car after it's already been sold to a new owner. That owner has found the license plates and has told the police, but because they now know where to look, they can start investigating all the times we were caught on camera speeding, but never find because the license plates were fake. Understand? I hope so. There has been talk of a 30 point deduction for the London club, leaving us bottom of the table with minus 14 points. There has also been rumours that relegation from the Premier League is a very real possibility. Unfortunately, 
I can imagine a timeline where the Premier League decide to make an example out of Chelsea and remove us from the league. If the investigation does go south and Chelsea are charged with major FFP violations, don't rule it out. Chelsea were one of the first teams to have a very wealthy owner come into the club, splash a lot of cash and disrupt the status quo of the league. Since then, clubs like Newcastle United and Manchester City have followed suit, although City actually have been charged 115 times for FFP violations and misrepresenting the club's income in order to spend more on players. In fact, City were banished from European football for two years before the verdict was overturned. I would like to state once more, Chelsea have not been charged. We are under investigation and are fully cooperating with the league in said investigation. But whether this will or won't be enough to avoid harsh punishment is still to be determined. I don't want to be a fear monger, but what Roman did was very serious and the league don't take these things lightly. Everton again were hit with a 10 point deduction, the most severe in Premier League history for being 20 million pounds over FFP and could be struck with a further nine point deduction if a 300 million pound compensation claim from Burnley, Leeds and Leicester is granted. This claim is in relation to the club's relegation from the Premier League whilst Everton survived during a period of time when they were in violation of FFP. So yes, once again, the Abramovich leaks are very, very serious. And depending on how the investigation goes, our chances of signing an elite striker the club has been calling out for for so long diminishes. What do you think will happen to Chelsea? Will we face a massive points deduction or will we face relegation? Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts. Whilst you're at it, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. All the good stuff every YouTuber asks for. I've been The Quick Take and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.